In the opinion of many Olympus photographers, one of the best Zuiko lenses is this one, the 12 to 100 Pro lens. Although the widest aperture is a 4, it is constant throughout its zoom range, which is eight and a half times. But the big thing about this lens, about apart from its quality, of course, is the image stabilization in the lens, which works in conjunction with the stabilizer in the camera. I've been busy unearthing a few photographs which have not been published, as far as I know, on YouTube. So I thought you would like to see them and I'll describe them in some detail for you. In 2019, I was taken on an autumn tour of the Wirral in Cheshire. And one of the places we visited, I was taken to, was Hoy Lake on the estuary of the River Dee. Now these Sandstone rocks you can now see on the screen are quite unique, but I felt it was important to make sure they were sharp as well as the background. So I set the camera to aperture priority, and let me see, yes, I used factor 11. That gives me sufficient depth of field, but just to make sure, I manually focus in about 50 feet into the picture to make sure that the foreground is sharp as well as the background. And I think it's worked okay. From sea level we go up a little bit, well 2,000 feet, to Kinder Scout, to the Kinder Downfall. And here because of the importance of the rocks in the foreground, I have adopted similar techniques to the last image. Also, in my positioning where I stood, I felt from a compositional point of view, it was important to have that distant reservoir in the right place. There was some haze about, as you can see, but if you have strong foreground interest, then that seems to reduce the impact of that haze in the distance. I don't always succumb to the photographic cliche of early morning or late evening landscape shots. If you are really are a good landscape photographer, then you should be able to take a decent picture at any time of day, provided the light is okay. However, I did succumb to this one, Scout Scar near Kendall. Forget apertures, shutter speeds and all that sort of business. This image is created entirely out of light, of course, after four o'clock in the afternoon. So I've joined everybody else, haven't I? But I don't mind it. Much of my work is general landscape under beautiful lighting for commercial purposes. But occasionally, now and then, I take, like this, detail shots, particularly good for competitions in my local camera club. I haven't submitted this one yet, uh, I might do one day, but uh, it's one of those shots, it should do well. It was taken before 10 o'clock in the morning, so that's guaranteed, isn't it? The shots you've seen so far have been taken on pleasant sunny days, but what of dull days? Well, the simple trick, as you see with this image, is to get rid of the sky. If you include the sky in this type of shot, it becomes the brightest part of the image. It's a distraction. The other thing about this is that the shutter speed was a fifteenth of a second. 
but of course it was handheld courtesy of this lens along with the camera you don't need a tripod you can hand hold this combination as you can see quite successfully the sun in this shot is in the far distance i'm in the dull bit of the landscape and it was amazing how it was fooling the metering. Normally, I would spot meter that part of the view, but it was still overexposing. Therefore, to compensate for that, and I might have been doing something wrong, I would admit to that, but I overcame the problem by changing the EV to minus 1.7. And thankfully, it did work before the effect in the distance, which didn't last for very long, disappeared completely. Another exercise in controlling depth of field, where everything has to be sharp from front to back, something that Micro Four Thirds is particularly good at. Nevertheless, Aperture, priority, F11 again, yes, my favourite, F11, but the hyperfocal distance, as with that Cheshire shot, focusing in manually about, what, 50 feet into the picture, does help to keep the foreground sharp. The other problem, which you won't realise because you can't see it, is the lack of people, and a little bit of patience was necessary with this shot. We now come to an area of my work where this lens becomes increasingly important. Church interiors. I don't like lugging a tripod around, it gets in the way. Instead, I rely on the image stabilisation in this lens combined with the camera's stabilisation. However, the shutter speed here is not too onerous. 25th of a second at 200 ISO. But because the, the freedom I have in positioning myself, then it's important that those arches are an important contribution to the overall composition of the image. In this shot of Lincoln Cathedral, you have a huge dynamic range from the dark area around the choir stalls to that very bright window. Nevertheless, I did have to increase the ISO to 400. The idea of exposing to the right, in my opinion, is total nonsense because if I did that with this particular image, that window would be overexposed. So I have underexposed, assisted by spot metering. The problem, of course, which I freely acknowledge, would be increase of noise. Now, I hope I've been very careful about that, but I leave you to judge the overall result. The National Trust allow photography but with the interiors, you are not allowed to use tripods. So we are back to relying on the image stabilizer in both lens and camera. The other problem with this shot, which I hope you don't realize, is white balance because of all that artificial light. Now here is one of those major advantages of saving to RAW because you don't, at the time of photography, you don't have to worry too much about white balance. That you can fine tune in the comfort of your own home in post-production, in perhaps Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever your preferred piece of software happens to be. As well as presenting the big view of Derwent Water in the Lake District, 
I sometimes like to go for detail, particularly where there is a good reflection. At the time, I was fascinated, motivated by the light striking those trees in the distance. Again, it's a sort of image, it's not commercial, it's a sort of image I might consider for a competition in my camera club, or indeed, if one were to use it commercially, I think it would make an excellent background image in a book where you would perhaps superimpose other images of text, particularly over the lake reflection. Well, sometimes it's a good idea to turn the camera 90 degrees and have an upright portrait image. Obviously, the composition here lended itself to that interpretation. But of course, what attracted my eye, and I hope yours, is the red bush through the arches. That was the whole point of taking this picture. But again, I think it looks better with the camera turned 90 degrees. Well, that is the end of this short selection, all taken with this lens, the 12 to 100 Pro lens, which in my opinion, if not already, will become a classic. You can see further examples of my work on my YouTube channel, over 100, and if you click on the link, I'll put the link in the comments page of this particular page. Just click on it and it will then take you through to the full listing of my programs. So, I may see you again in a moment. Thank you.